our next speaker is Muhammad Ali, the CEO of the Islam Channel, uh, a channel that's actually been leading the way in fighting the war on terror and the attacks on the Muslim community, and also a support to the latest conference. According to the uh, British press, I am a terrorist. So today you have the privilege to listen to a terrorist. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, when I apply for, uh, because I go in and out, and every time I get in, I get asked all those stupid questions I ask. I get asked, how long are you going to stay here? So I always tell them at the immigration and tell them I'm going to stay here forever. And they get shocked. So Bob is here and advised me to apply for a British passport during the time of Jackson. So I applied and she sent me a letter back. She said, uh, you are a person who is not deemed to be of good manners. Maybe I don't watch other stuff like her husband. <laughs> and I don't get I don't get paid by the tax states. Anyway, today we are talking about the Islamophobia and the media. In 2006, I organized some of the cartoons uh, affairs. I organized a conference in Denmark. I was looking for financial support. A company called Arla in Denmark. They started talking about tolerance and helping Muslims and they advertised everywhere, especially in the Middle East, where they have big markets. So I approached them. I said I'm organizing a conference called Islamophobia at the Thailand and the West. Can you support me? They said to me, yes, we will support you if you change the title of the conference. I said to them, get lost. I'm not in need of your financial support. I go ahead and do it myself. The reason is <coughs> because Islamophobia is an umbrella, is an umbrella hate crime. Yes, there are few Muslims who are white, but the majority of Muslims are not white, are brown like myself, Asians and so on. Yes, there are quite few Goran Alamis Muslims who are well off and wealthy, but the majority who are a working class community. So really the Islamophobia itself is about race, is about class as well. And that's I'm glad today that we are here because over the last few years they tried to divide us and tell us, okay, Islam against non-Muslims and it's, a, it's an attack of our way of life, as uh, Mr. Blair put it. Our way of life is an attack on it. So, from the Muslims, the enemy, from uh, the enemy within, and so on. And I'm glad we are here today. You know why? Friends, I'll tell you one. If the Muslim community are silenced, if we are crushed, believe me, you are the next. You won't be able to hold anything like this. So, <laughs> last time, just a few weeks ago, few yards from here, the photographers organized a conference, a small one like this. And the title was, I'm a journalist, I'm not a terrorist. So the time will come to say, I'm an activist, I'm not a terrorist. I'm a journalist, I'm not a terrorist. I'm a nurse, I'm not a terrorist, and so on. But now, we have to fight back and fight back together. The media, personally, I'm a very good case study. There is no single media outlet in the UK. I didn't receive an attack from them. Say, the Guardian, I got some, uh, some deal of, of support. Two weeks ago, you remember the attack on Stephen Pinks? Next day, on Saturday, I was reading The Sun. I don't read it, I don't buy The Sun anyway, because I was waiting in a barber shop waiting for my turn, so that's... Yeah, don't blame me for that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, was, I was looking, what they say? A woman, a woman in a veil. And down there, 
Stephen King is a devoted Christian. And you can understand, women in a day are attacking a devoted Christian. Look at how they, how they distort the thing, distort things. In 2007, we organized the Global Peace and Unity event. I got approached by Dominic Kennedy from the Times. He said, I want to spend one day with you. I said, you are welcome. So he spent the whole day with me. And at the end of it, he said to me, you know Muhammad, you know what? I didn't find anything that offends me as a Christian or as an Englishman. I said to him, we are not out here in the business of offending Christians or Englishmen. And he disappeared. When in the morning he told me I'm going to write an article, I didn't hear from him at all. Until when? Until 2008. I got a series of questions from him. One of them, he said to me, there is a claim that you are a terrorist. Yes. And you are a revolutionist. You want to overthrow the Tunisian government through the revolutionary means. I said, well, what is wrong with that? And even the police, when they came, I said to them, I swear to God, if I have the means to overthrow all the other regimes through the revolution, I do it tomorrow. I'm not going to wait for anyone. I'm not going to wait for them. Anyway, I've seen three pages, including the first page in 2008. Three pages. A terrorist was advising the police. And Neville Jones, next day she said Muhammad Ali must be sacked from the police. Can I tell you something? I wasn't sacked from the police till today. You know why? Because I'm not employed by the bloody police. <laughs> then uh, I wrote to her. She didn't reply. When I met her, I told her, why did you reply to me? She said to me, I don't know your address. Come on, you are the security advisor. You are the chief of the Joint Intelligence Committee. And you don't know where Muhammad Ali Harad lives. Come on, man. <laughs> and they want me to believe that. Anyway. I know the time is, uh, I think I run out of time, uh, but I come from Tunisia where two minutes means two hours. Anyway, I didn't have to great yet. Uh, inshallah, we have to keep on going. We have to work together, we have to stand together, we have to fight back together. The last thing I want to say, we do organize uh, quite large event, and on that event, we do give awards. So this year, we decided, inshallah, to launch a new award for the Civil Courage Award for those who stand for justice.